TIPCO Connect Intelligence allows you to take advantage of both data at rest and data in motion to create a system of insight and have an integrated analytics experience. This video shows utilization of real-time sensor data to offer intelligent surveillance of industrial equipment. To do this, we'll use TIPCO Spotfire, Tear, and TIPCO Streaming in Harmony. We'll demonstrate a process for visually analyzing historical data, using predictive modeling to determine rules and thresholds, deploying those predictive rules into a real-time data feed, and monitoring and alerting new data in real time. This provides a fantastic closed loop analytics operation. You'll be able to tighten your processes, increase equipment uptime, and maximize productivity. This process can be used with various equipment in various industries, but today we're gonna to look at artificial lift systems and remote oil fields for production surveillance. To start, here we are in Spotfire 10, looking at some wells in North Dakota. These are all managed far away in Houston, Texas. There's some particular wells in this area marked yellow, and I know we've had some failures in the region. I'll use Spotfire to drill into just those wells for my study. I'll then use Spotfire to color these wells by those that have had failures and those that have it, and I'll sort this table so I can select them easier. At the bottom here, I've brought in sensor data for electrical submersible pumps on these wells. For this demo, I just grabbed pump intake pressure, which is shown in blue, and pump motor current, which is shown in orange. Quickly selecting the wells with failure, I see that they have lots of spikes in their signals, which is something I want to investigate further. On this page, I can drill into more details. I can explore wells by county or field, or even select individual wells. Selecting this well with failures from the map, I see a zoomed view of the intake pressure and motor current, both of which I see have those same spikes in the signal. From here, I can get information on how to improve my control charts. I have these red dotted lines showing upper and lower control limits, and I see a pretty wide range here for 100 kilopascals for pressure and about 30 amps for current. Comparatively, the wells without failures have much narrower ranges for the control limits, indicating the submersible pumps have pretty steady operation. Now let's investigate these failures a bit further. Here I have pressure and current data overlaid for the failed wells. Looking at a couple wells side by side, you'll see these black vertical lines, which are logged events for when my pump failed and the lift system shut down. I'll grab a few failed regions on a single well, and on the bottom, Spotfire aligned each of these failures to the zero at the black line on the right, and then plotted the sensor data in the hours leading up to the failure event. In each of these, I see a drop in current, all associated with an uptick in pressure. This could be due to gas buildup or various other issues in the well. I'll expand this by looking at four different failures, each spread across four wells. I see the same pattern in these signals, indicating that this is a pretty consistent signature for all failures I want to start monitoring. So how do I go about doing this? When I go back and look at all my wells, I see even in good wells, pressure and current signals have noise and bounce around. So simply monitoring for inverse relationships with the two signals is not enough on its own. I'll get all sorts of false positives. We can instead better model this signature by using some statistics and tear. Tear is TIPCO's proprietary version of R that allows me to deploy R scripts directly from my Spotfire analysis using only the data I want. In this view, I'll zoom in and look for some pressure trends showing an uptick. When I see a signal I like, I can select the points for the slope, and you'll see here, Tear will calculate the slope of my points when I hit this button. This slider also allows me to adjust the selected slope manually, and you'll see the new adjusted slope below the slider. Moving to 1.2 adds 20%, and moving to 1.1 adds 10%. However, a better method than this manual adjustment is to use a grid search, which is used here to find the optimal slope value. Below the slope calculations, I have some backtesting set up against the historical data, which determines the true positive rate of failures for the slope value. I see that across all my wells, 75% of the time this slope value was crossed, an actual failure occurred, and about 82% of the time the optimal slope threshold was crossed, a failure occurred. I can move the slider forward to adjust how many hours ahead the algorithm will look, and I can get a better sense of how accurate my slope model is. What we have here are great predictive results, so I now want to include this in my alerting workflow. I can simply hit this button to have the information about the slope sent to TIPCO Streaming for real-time event processing. In TIPCO Streaming, I'm able to build workflows that take real-time data feeds, apply logic and advanced models, and output streaming data and alerts. For this example, I've simulated a feed for sensor data, which is evaluated for these alerting thresholds and outputs data streams. I'll then pick up these data streams in Spotfire for more visual analytics. Back in Spotfire, I see real-time pressure and current data coming in. Each point on the map is sized by the pressure with larger circles indicating higher pressure. They are colored by motor current, with yellow and red colors indicating a drop in amperage. Similarly, this chart shows those same points aligned by well ID on the x-axis and motor current on the y-axis. You'll see that as pressure rises for some of these wells, current will drop and these circles just fall to the bottom of the chart. Spotfire 10 doesn't limit me to just the values right now. I can also go to this tab to see the whole trend broken down by individual well. Here I'm showing a moving window for current and pressure over the past five minutes. 
By clicking the x-axis, I can change this time window to just a few seconds or even do it in hours and days. I'll decrease this down to one minute so you can really see the data flowing. The beauty of Spotfire 10 is that I can interact with this data directly. Using Spotfire's interactive brush linking, I can select specific data and have it shown across all the charts. These well IDs are also changing colors based on motor current. If I want to grab one for detailed view, I simply click it and now I can see the data trending and some upper and lower limits in the red dotted lines. In this view, I have current and pressure overlaid and I have a visual schematic that shows real-time data overlaid for motor current and intake pressure. So what about those alerting thresholds I set earlier from the pressure slope? Well, since I have the rules integrated in my TIBCO streaming workflow, I have these alerts sent to Spotfire as well, which I can visualize in real time. On this page, you'll see a live bar chart scrolling up, and this is showing the number of alerts triggered over time. For this simulation, I also set up alerts for motor current, which are shown on the left. In the table at the right, I can see the number of alerts per well ID, which gives me a quick way of viewing the wells with the most alerts and most likely to encounter failure. I can easily hit this button in Spotfire to sort the table by current or pressure, allowing me to easily prioritize action for specific wells. At the top of the page, I have a nice KPI that shows the totals, which you'll see to red after 50 alerts have been triggered. If I ever want to modify these alerting thresholds, I can simply repeat the slope modeling procedure and refine my model to deploy new rules to TIBCO streaming. In this way, we get a beautiful closed loop for continuous improvement.